Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Solus 4.2, which was just recently released. Now, I have not used Solus since literally the first day I switched to Linux full time. Linux or Solus Budgie was my first Linux distribution that I used after switching away from Windows. And that was four years ago. And I highly enjoyed it, but because of the, the repository limitations that it had, I moved on to something that was more popular. And I haven't used it since. When I used Solus, there wasn't even a KDE Plasma version. I mean, in, so it's been a long time since I've used this. Now, today I'm going to be looking at the Plasma version because I'm very interested in what this is like. And um, we'll take a look at some of the, the new things, obviously, but I'll also take a look and see if some of those repository li repository limitations that it had before are still there or whether or not they've gotten better. So let's uh, jump into, um, this is the live CD here or the live ISO and cool wallpaper. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's definitely not traditional. I mean, it's just a cool picture, which is, I mean, usually in a uh, distribution, you get a, a wallpaper with a logo on it or something. I mean, this is, you know, it's pretty. So I will just say this, that I'm using this in a virtual machine. So um, performance issues will probably be a little bit wonky. It's just something we're going to have to deal with because I don't have a capture card. So I, can, I can't install this on Metal and actually show you what it looks like. It took a long time for the menu to actually activate those. And, that, and that's unusual, even in a virtual machine. We'll go ahead and install this. And this looks like a... I mean, this looks a lot like calamari's but I don't think it is usually there's like a little uh, question mark up here but anyways I guess it doesn't really matter well uh you can find my location see if you do it do it correctly <laughs> US, yep. Make sure this is working. Test. And you did not find my location very well, but it's a virtual machine, so it's probably wonky. Uh, next, automatically partition. Sure. What are you going to, are you going to use um, ext4, I wonder? No, don't need to encrypt. Type the host name. We'll call this Solus VM. Install bootloader. Yep. Okay. Username Dr. Mdub. Oops. Good password. Add now. Yeah, this is not Calamari's. This is custom. Because this doesn't look anything. I mean, it just looks a little bit similar to Calamari's, but it's definitely not that. Unless they've completely customized it. If if anybody in the comment knows what installer this is, if this or if this is custom, let me know in the comments. All right, let's see here. Um, MS DOS partition. I'm interesting to see what um, it does not tell you what it's going to uh, partition your drives as. I'm interested. I wonder if they're going to use ext4 because if it, if this ends up being butterfs, I'm probably going to have a problem because butterfs does not do well in a virtual machine, as, at least as far as I can tell. Okay, well, we're going to see if it installs, uh, and I'll take a note of the. Uh, interestingly enough, it did not set the crack clock correctly. It's only 6:40, and it says 11:40. That is fascinating. We'll see how long this takes. Okay, that only took about a minute, honestly. That was all it was. And now we're restarting, and we'll see if it lo logs me into the actual system or if it actually logs me into the back of the live CD. Uh, I may end up having to close this down and reboot into the actual system after ejecting the live CD, but we'll see. Yeah, we're back in the live CD. Okay. Um, so we're going to have to shut this down. Do this this way. Okay. Settings. 
and that's your storage and we'll remove from drive okay all right now we can start back up start back up again Alrighty, see what boot times look like. That was really quick. <laughs> that, that was really quick. The install was really quick. I was really impressed with that. Now let's go ahead and log in and see how. With Plasma, you always know a system's slow when it you go from the login screen to the desktop because sometimes that can take quite a bit. So let's see how how quick this is. That was impressive. I mean, seriously impressive. That reminds me a lot of what MX Linux was like. Uh, this is very good. Yeah. All right. So let's take a look around the system first. See what is available. Because you remember, it's been four years since I've used Solus, so I don't even remember what the package manager even looks like or how to use it. So we may have to do a little bit of research. That's always good for a video. You're supposed to know what you're doing. But... Well, this is much more responsive. Oh, good. Awesome. All right, so starting with development. There's a user feedback console, which I'm assuming is probably like a bug reporter. Graphics, uh, GwenView, LibreOffice Draw, and Ocular. Internet, Firefox, KD Connects installed. All Thunderbird is here. Multimedia, Eliza is going to be a um, music player, I believe. Let's open that up, I think. I think that's what that is. Yep, music player. Uh, I believe that's what's going to be... Re I believe Eliza is the new KDE music player that's going to be replacing the one that's stock. I could be completely wrong about that. I feel like I've read that before. Um, MPV's here, SM player. What is SM player? SM player is going to be your mu your movie player. Okay. Um, really would have preferred VLC. VLC just makes more sense than something like that, but whatever. Uh, LibreOffice is here. Uh, not a lot of settings, system settings here. This is just going to be the regular KDE settings thing. And um, the global theme is set to Solus Dark, which is a custom theme. Because this is not Breeze. This is a different color than Breeze Dark. That's cool. That's good. Um, nothing crazy, of course. It's just dark and blue. You know, dark color in blue um let's see here nothing hugely out of the order ordinary not a large installation at all no crazy apps even the the um you know kd apps are kind of minimal here it did get the clock right i just noticed that so let's uh let's see here let's about let's look at the about system information so we're using KDE Plasma version 5.20, which is the current version. Uh, KDE, it doesn't, sh apparently KDE doesn't show the KDE apps version in this anymore. Maybe they call it the frameworks version. I'm not sure. I can't actually remember. This is using kernel 5.10.2, which is the most current version, I believe. Uh, it's definitely close. Um, now we've opened up a th few things here. Let's, uh. Let's do Alt Shift T and see if we get a terminal, which we do. Nice. Let's uh make this full screen and zoom in a whole bunch. Let's see if NeoFetch is installed. Nope. All right. Let's uh see if free dash M I believe is the command. Yep. So you're using 509 megabytes, which is spectacular. After I've opened up some things, I mean, I wonder what it was blank because 509 for plasma is like really good. Um, let's see if we can look, if HTOP is installed. Nope. How about top? Top is here. So we got 141 tasks and, uh, let's see here. It's been a long, so long since I've used top. I'm so used to HTOP with colors. Yeah, I'm not sure where it says thread. So we're just gonna, all right, so let, this is a good opportunity to figure out how to use their package manager. Cause I don't remember how to use package manager. Solus package manager. Let's see. Let's see what the documentation for Solus looks like. Basics of package management. 
You can install one or more package by using sudo sudo eo package install. So that's basically the same uh, type type of syntax as like apt. So let's uh, let's quit this and we'll clear out of this and we'll do sudo, sudo eopkg install neofetch. Yes. Let's resize this just a bit. That was really fast. Really fast. Let's see if it actually worked. Yep. Cool. That so NeoFetch is in the repositories. Let's see what um what I wanted to try and see. Just a random program that I use all the time. It's called NC Spot. It's a terminal thing to listen to Spotify. Let's see if it's in their repository. sudo eopkg uh, install nc spot. Nope. That's disappointing. So let, what about Spotify? Okay, so Did I actually go through and type that incorrectly? EOPKG. -E yeah. All right, so Spotify isn't there either. This is the same problem I had when I used it four years ago. The stuff, their repositories just aren't good. Now, let's see if there's a... Um, a graphical package manager here maybe maybe uh discovery is here maybe somewhere um software center okay so this is this is not discovery let's uh, close this here yeah 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 go away all right we can minimize that let's see here Gaming on Solus, so there's, um, let's see if, where's like a search? It's Steam here. Steam is, is available. Okay, what about Spotify? Okay, so Spotify is not available in the regular repositories. You have to go to this third party thing in order to install so much. So the Chrome's here, uh, Uh, NSYNC is here, Ocean Audio, Plex Media Server, PyCharm if you wanted to actually use it, um, Skype, Spotify. Okay, so let's just install this and see how long it takes. Because if I remember right, this takes forever to actually install. This may take some time. It even tells you. Could not reach destination file. Complete fail. Okay. And that one in close. Interesting. Bugs. We have bugs. Fascinating. Okay. Um. Yeah, this is still a problem. So. I like distributions that go through and say, hey, you wanna, we're going to do something different. We're not going to base ourselves on Ubuntu. We're not going to base ourselves on Arch. We're not going to base ourselves on Debian. We're, Debian, we're going to create our own thing. And that's what Solus has done. The downside of that is you come up with these kind of problems. I mean, the bugs themselves, I mean, this could have something to do with being in a virtual machine. It's 100% possible that that's the case. Uh but the repository thing is something that is just has not been solved for whatever reason. They're very resistant to putting third-party applications, like even even third-party applications that are open source. Uh, you know, they not putting any of those in their repositories at all. So that means you can't install them via command line. You can't update them probably via the command line. You probably have to focus and do that, doing that from this software center. So if you want to use the Linux like I use it, which is primarily from the command line, it doesn't seem like I'm assuming that there's actually a way of, if 
See, this is actually completely frozen. Oh, we did get this open up here. Okay. Um, and you open up twice because... Wow. It opened up like four or five, four, four or five times. All right, we need to figure out how to... Uh, I keep hitting control enter for so let, let's see how to uninstall. Oh, actually, it's sudo eo package pkg install htop. That at least htop is in their repositories. So htop. Oops. Let's see here. The sys software. Let's search for software is not there what do you what do you call this software center but it's not finding anything called software interesting my guess is that the slowness of this is actually because of this being in a virtual machine uh, And I'm actually, I'm just scrolling right through this, all my processes here, because I'm trying to find Software Center uh, so I can actually force quit it. I could do just, uh, I could just quit this and do um, kill all. Oops. I got to know the, so let's first do this, xprop. Find out what the hell the name of this is. This is named Solus-SC. That's intuitive. So kill all Solus-SC. There we go. All right. Well, let's see if the responsiveness of the system comes back after Software Center decided to completely crash. Uh seems to we'll open that back up again console yeah that it, it seems it seems to be back good all right so like i was talking about i admire the gumption and the courage it takes to come out and create something new that's not based on another distro it's just the the interesting decisions that they make not to have a very well stocked repository that it would keep me from using it as a daily driver now from a plasma perspective i was really impressed with the startup times uh in a virtual machine i mean uh, I've, if, if plasma starts really good in a virtual machine you've done things right but mostly this is just stock plasma which is good um, there's nothing wrong with stock plasma being what they present uh, i'm impressed that it, i'm i'm impressed and glad and that this is up to date because solus isn't i think you get about one update a year one major update a year but that maybe i'm not quite entirely sure about that for sure uh it's not a rolling release as far as i know um so whether or not you, it, when 5.21 comes out for Plasma, whether or not you'd get that right away, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe you would. Let's go ahead and look at the software center again. See if this thing will crash one more time. Let's see if we can just install something different. Um, I wonder if... Okay, so he, there's I use Bitwarden as my password manager. Let's see if it's in... Nope, no bit warden here, and there's no bit warden here. So what would happen? What, huh. The question. All right, so let's go see if here. I'm interested in seeing if because I think bit warden has a app image. Yep. So I'm just curious to see if 
Solus will, will work with app images. Oh, that was fantastic. That was very good. So app images support app image support on Solus is fantastic. That will save quite a bit of quite a lot of hassle with that kind of mediocre repository thing that they've got going on. So Bitwarden is there. Um, I'm interested to see out of the box snap install mailspring. I just happen to know that that's a snap. Snap out of the box too. I wonder if Flatpak. I I don't know enough about Flatpak in order to actually go through and try to install something, but I'm assuming it probably is. We'll see. I'm actually going to find out. Let's go to FlatHub. We'll, we'll install something here. So like there's a there's a Flatpak of Spotify. We'll wait until this is done. Snaps are notoriously take long to pretty fairly long to install. It's almost like they're building from source. I'm also curious. Let's go home here. Oh, and somehow Solus has managed to make it so that the snap. Uh, actually, let's close this and make sure. Yeah, there's no snap folder in your home directory. You want to know? <laughs> Solus, right there, you've gotten a win because if you install SnapD on like an Arch, you get a snap snap folder in your home directory, and it cannot go away. I think the same is with it's same the same with Ubuntu. Anyways, let's go to downloads here. Hold on a second. I wanted to try. Single click, single click to enter into a folder. When Flatpak? No. All right, so Flatpak support is at least click to install Flatpak is not uh is not supported. Let's see if it will do it from the terminal. Nope. Flatpak is not installed out of the box. So they support snaps, they support app images, but not Flatpak, which, you know, it's a choice. It, not the choice I would probably you know choose, but then I'm an arch guy. We pronounce it the AUR. That's just the way things are. Uh, anyway, so I will say this. With the way they supported app images, that app image installation was just out of the world, out of this world great because a lot of times every Linux distribution will support app images. It's just a lot of times they'll just open it up and then you'll have to go into your downloads folder and double click that icon every single time you want to run the program because it won't actually move the dot desktop file into your your path or whatever. This actually said I'm installing this. Now if I wanted to go through and here in the menu and search for Bitwarden. Of course it's very slow. Come on now. This has to be from virtual machine problem. I don't, I don't think if you install this in metal, metal you'll have the same pro issues. I spoke too soon. Apparently Bitwarden is not showing up in the application menu. Maybe after restart it would. That's a little bit disappointing. Because I was, I was gonna, I was all for being gung ho and praising their support of app images, but it didn't show up in the application menu. So that means that if I wanted to actually install the, if I actually wanted to go through and open it up again, I'd have to double click that icon. That's annoying. That's annoying. That that's not a soulless problem. That's something that happens with app images. Very rarely will you find a distribution that will actually go through and install the thing. Like it's actually installing it. That's why Snap is actually so good. Because like we get Mailspring here. Yeah, Mailspring showed up in the uh, the menu just fine. Okay, so that is just a brief look. Almost a half an hour look, actually. <laughs> I was just, it was just a brief look at Solus 4.2. I didn't go through the new things because 
going over new things when you haven't used it for four years doesn't make a lot of sense. So if you've used it before, you'll have to look. For, I'll, I will link in the show notes below to the like the change log or whatever. So if you've used it before, maybe you can just go through that and see what's new. But uh, from a new user's perspective, I've kind of gone through and look and look to see how Solus is doing. So just in conclusion, my thoughts on it. I admire it, but I probably wouldn't use it. That's that's where I'm at right now for multiple reasons. The biggest one is that I enjoy installing software from repositories, and like Ubuntu has a huge repository. You never have to touch Snap if you don't want to. You can just install stuff through sudo apt install, and there's a whole bunch of stuff there. Obviously, Arch has the AUR. Uh, Fedora has a huge repository and a whole bunch of other repositories that you can add. Like if you wanted to install the NVIDIA drivers, I didn't even get a chance to go through and try that on this because I'm using a virtual machine. But I mean, I'm not sure how the NVIDIA driver solution would work on in in Solus because I mean, is it in the repositories? Or are you going to have to build these things from scratch? I mean, it's just it's kind of you know crazy. Uh, so like I said, I admire it, but I wouldn't use it because of that repository problem. And even with the app image support which apparently isn't as good as I'd hoped it would be, but I mean, it's there at least. And Snap is there, so you could use Snap. So that adding those on top kind of take care of the repository problems, but I don't want to use three different package managers, basically, uh, to, you know, get all my programs installed. I want to use one. Uh, that's and, and even if you limited yourself to the graphic file, the graphic software center that's really two things too because it has their own repositories and then you have to click on the third party link and as we saw now whether or not that 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 uh failure to install spotify from the software center was a, a virtual machine problem i don't know uh, but you know it's a thing so it's just a thing so i would i would um man i mean it, i like i said i admire them but i wouldn't use this then now in the comments below, let me know if you've ever used Solus before. If you're using the most recent Solus, let me know if you like it. Maybe there's something that I'm missing because a lot of people, when I uh, reviewed MX Linux, pointed out things that I didn't cover because I'd never used it before. And that's really great. I love having a conversation in the comments, so make sure you leave one. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so in any number of ways. Leave the, th the video a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification icon button. You can also su support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Uh, I did go through and redo the tier, so you can now just support us for a dollar. So, that's cool. I'd like your dollar. I'd take a dollar. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.